From the Anasasi of the American Southwest to the Minoans of ancient Crete, today we look at seven civilizations that mysteriously disappeared. Number seven, the Anasazi. One of the earliest societies in America was that of the Anasazi, also known as the ancient Puebloans. These early peoples lived in what is now the southwestern United States around the Four Corners region from around 100 BC to 1300 AD. At the height of their civilization, the Anasazi built some of the most remarkable cliff dwellings, like that of the Cliff Palace at Mesa Verde, Colorado, and Pueblo Benito, New Mexico. These cities made of wood and mud that were built high up in the mountains, tucked away from the elements, were comparable in cultural complexity to other ancient cities. The Anasazi developed an irrigation system for farming in their arid environment and had an advanced religious belief system which they followed devoutly. They were so devout that they did not tolerate any other religions encroaching on their territory and were known for being hostile. In fact, Anasazi in Navajo means enemy ancestors. Because of this, the modern-day Pueblo Indians, the descendants of the Anasazi, dislike the term and prefer them to be referred to as ancient Puebloans. So what happened to the Anasazi? Well, despite conspiracies, like that of them being abducted by aliens, or in fact being aliens, most of the signs point to the Great Drought of North America, which occurred around 1130 AD and lasted for 300 years. The drought forced population numbers to drop significantly, and the remaining population was probably forced to split up and migrate to more habitable locations. Along with the Pueblo Indians, the modern-day Hopi traced their roots back to the Anasazi. Number 6. The Minoans from around 2000 BC to 1500 BC, the Minoan civilization that lived on the Mediterranean island of Crete flourished. They built giant palaces filled with artwork and even had a basic plumbing system. The civilization owes its name to King Minos from the Greek legend of Theseus. In the legend, Minos is the king who built the labyrinth in which Theseus was trapped with the Minotaur. For over 2000 years, it was thought that this kingdom was just the stuff of legend but archaeologists in the 20th century discovered that it was much more. In fact, archaeological evidence shows that the Minoans were one of the most dominant civilizations of their time period, with a vast shipping empire that basically controlled the Mediterranean. Their fresco-style artwork and distinct architecture was unparalleled by the other Greek islands. But due to reasons that are still being uncovered, their civilization was wiped off the map in an instant. Most signs point to the cause of their vanishing being the volcano Terra, which lies in the waters north of Crete. Combining legends of the Minoans' disappearance with the excavated evidence paints a tale like this. The volcano Terra erupted, sending a giant tsunami waves toward Crete. Though some Minoans were able to make it out by ship, there was just not enough time to prepare for the destruction that was caused when these waves crashed upon their shores. The Minoan civilization was washed away seemingly overnight. Number five, the Olmec. You may recognize the iconic stone heads of the Olmec civilization, but you might not know just how advanced these peoples who predated the Aztecs and Mayans were. The Olmec civilization lived throughout Mexico, with their biggest cities being located in the central region near the Gulf. They were powerful and populous from 1200 BC until 400 BC. But there is a sudden drop in archaeological findings for the Olmecs after 300 BC. Beyond being master stone carvers, the Olmecs had developed a huge trading network and even developed their own writing system that used symbols or glyphs. They were also the first known peoples to extract latex from trees and turn it into rubber that was used for toy balls and various tools. The word Olmec actually translates in the Aztec language, Nahuatl, to mean people of rubber country. So what happened to this ancient culture after 300 BC? Well, anthropologist and archaeologist haven't pinpointed exactly why they suddenly disappeared, but there are several theories. They may have had to migrate and split up their cultural network due to droughts or climate change. They may have brought about their civilization's downfall via a devastating civil war. Or their culture may have progressed so quickly 
that it transformed into what would become Mayan culture. Number four, the Nabadians, the city of Petra, located in what is now the country of Jordan, is one of the most breathtaking architectural wonders of the ancient world and was home to an extraordinary ancient civilization known as the Nabadians. The Nabadians arrived in Jordan around 700 BC and would prosper as one of the elite trading nations until the first century AD. Then in the fourth century, the Nabadians would suddenly pick up and abandon Petra. The city was carved into the mountains around it and for most of its existence was an impenetrable fortress. Because of this, as it being at the perfect strategic location to control trading in the Middle East and Arabian Peninsula, Nabadia became a cultural melting pot, with the Nabadians becoming experts in irrigation, medicine, and the arts. They were even known for adopting much of the Hellenistic cultures of Rome and Greece into their native Arabic traditions. The Nabadians lived alongside the great empires of Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar and had a working relationship with the Romans until they sided against them during the period of turmoil that resulted from Caesar's assassination. The Romans would eventually conquer most of their territory, yet they still called Petra home for a few hundred years. Then, one day, the Nabadians decided it was time to leave their capital, so they packed up everything and left. Most of their people probably assimilated into other cultures and empires, and though it's not known exactly why they decided to leave their beautiful city, it is most likely that because of technological advancements in seafaring, it lost much of the value it once had as an international marketplace. Number three, the Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans lived from approximately 1600 to 1100 BC, becoming the first civilization to be comprised of several Greek states working together. Mycenaean Greece was made up of the areas of what would come to be home to Athens, Sparta, Crete, and Thebes, and at its height extended its rule to boundaries close to that of modern Greece. The Mycenaeans were heavily influenced by the aforementioned Minoan civilization, improving and expanding upon their artwork, architecture, and religious traditions. Much of Mycenaean culture can be considered a direct precursor to that of ancient and classical Greece, and it is from them that most of the mythology of Greece would spring. If the myths and legends are true, Mycenaean Greece can claim some of the world's most renowned heroes. Perseus himself, the half-god who vanquished Medusa, is said to be the founder of Mycenae. But Perseus's kingdom wouldn't last long, as just as fast as it expanded, it was snuffed out. Many historians claimed that its early exit around 1200 BC was due to flying too close to the sun, as many texts claim that the Mycenaeans had tried and failed to expand their empire beyond Greece, costing them manpower and resources. The time around 1200 BC was an extremely wild time, as many civilizations in the Middle East and Mediterranean that were advanced for this point in history began fighting amongst themselves, causing many to collapse. Number 2. The Khmer Empire You will most likely recognize the temple at Angkor Wat. But do you know who built this architectural wonder? Angkor Wat was the capital of what is known as the Khmer Empire, that was a dominant force in Asia from the 9th to the 15th century. What is now divided into multiple independent nations was at one time all united under this Hindu-Buddhist civilization, made up of modern-day Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia. The Khmer Empire had a stranglehold on the Indochina Peninsula for 400 years. The empire was started by Jayavarman II, who as a brash outsider united the ethnically and religiously diverse region by force. Jayavarman's empire brought a heavy Indian influence to the peninsula, and though the architecture and cultural fingerprints it left can still be seen today, its existence was tumultuous to say the least. Throughout its rule, the Khmer Empire was constantly fighting with outside countries and putting down rebellions started by its own citizens, so one can see how it was destined for destruction. Although this may make it seem like the Khmer Empire was dysfunctional, it actually was quite progressive when it came to religious freedom and its advanced system of government that while technically was a monarchy, incorporated some fundamentals of democracy, such as attempting to gauge the average citizen's opinion. 
All of their governmental progress was for naught, however, as when the Mongols forced the Thai people out of their lands and into the Indochina, the Thai would end up ousting the Khmer people from power by sheer numbers. Number 1. Kingdom of Aksum Living during the same period as the Nevadians, on the other side of the Arabian Peninsula across the Red Sea, the powerful Aksumite Empire was thriving off another trade route. Also known as the Kingdom of Aksum, this Ethiopian empire is thought to have begun around 400 BC and prospered for over 1,000 years. But it would take only 200 years for them to virtually vanish off the map. At the empire's peak, at about 100 AD, they were the leading exporters of ivory and boasted one of the largest supplies of gold and other precious minerals like emeralds. The capital, Aksum, was one of the biggest cities in the world and supported the economic powerhouse of a nation that the Roman Empire viewed as an essential trade ally. The Aksumite Empire is one of the most important civilization when it comes to the three of the world's biggest religions. The empire was once ruled by the legendary Queen of Sheba, who is profiled in the Quran and both the Jewish and Christian Bibles as the lover of King Solomon, the son of David. The Aksumites converted to Christianity in the 4th century AD and were one of the first major empires to incorporate it as their main religion, being the first to put a holy cross on its currency. Islam owes a deal of gratitude to the empire as during times of persecution, they gave sanctuary to some of Muhammad's first followers. Religion would ironically be the civilization's undoing as the capital would be overthrown by a pagan queen in the middle of the 10th century who attempted to destroy all monuments and teaching of Christianity. Over the next two centuries, those faithful to the empire would retreat into the mountains and over several raids and conflicts be almost erased. The once shining city of Aksum now stands as a small village in the middle of nowhere. Although the city has not lost its mystery, as it is said to be the most likely resting place of the Ark of Covenant, there is even a church that the locals say it is held at, yet no one except its priest is allowed inside the Ark's chambers. 